Hey guys, NJ here. So let's move on to the next topic that I'd like to talk about in this preparation for the acro school stuff. And that is the camera, really. Um, I think this is something, again, that might just perhaps doesn't get thought about enough. Um, but it all goes back to what I talked about in the last video. It's about consistency and there are two kind of really important things when it comes to camera consistency. One of those is the lens and the other one is the camera angle and both of those are going to be crucial for that consistent, not only a consistent feel across all your quads but it's, it's beyond that in terms of your perspective, in terms of your ability to get close to objects if you want to follow a tree line. If you start flying different quads with different fisheye effects so say a 2.8 versus a 2.1 or a 2.3 lens that's really going to mess with you because if you're used to a 2.8 which i'm sure most of you have moved away from 2.8 now because it's so narrow you might find jumping to a 2.3 for instance the world just seems like a completely different place and your ability to judge distance becomes massively hampered and you've got to relearn again so as I said, moving forward, we don't want to be doing any relearning, no steps backwards. We want to keep as many things on the quad consistent as possible. So the lens itself is a really important one. Now, 2.1 is where I sit. It's where I'm the happiest and it, it kind of gives me enough of a fisheye to where I can see around the sides and it gives me that vertical field of view that's, uh, you know, extra vertical field of view over a 2.8 which is also important because that gives me some more scope with my my up tilt also a, a larger envelope in which to to set my up tilt um but it's something that is on all my quads it's consistent across all my quads it gives me enough of a field of view to where things don't feel like they're miles away when they're not really and when i get close to stuff it doesn't suddenly appear in your face and really bulbous and and, and weird like maybe on a, a when you start getting up to those crazy wide field of views so 2.1 is a real sweet spot for me so um, in terms of the camera choice, just go with something you like. Go with something that handles light well. I still use CCD cameras primarily. I've obviously been reviewing, testing, and trying a whole load of different cameras. And the CMOS cameras are getting so damn good now. Most of them will handle light quicker than a CCD, but there's something about the CCD image that I just can't leave. It makes everything look pretty and beautiful and just high, you know makes the experience even nicer for me i know that's a stupid non-technical thing to say but um things like the fox here arrow v3 i think is the one i still use in in quite a few of my quads and that's just the way it is it's uh, just something i've got used to and i really enjoy the picture but as i said the important thing is that the light handling feels good you haven't got anything washing out when you face the sun it wants to be able to expose both the light parts and the dark parts nicely so that you don't feel like you're ever struggling to see. As long as your camera is doing that, you know, it's a nice, enjoyable, pleasant picture to look through. Um, that's really kind of all that matters. And of course the latency, don't go for something with, um, most of them don't know anyway, but don't go for something with a super high latency for doing this kind of stuff. Latency is a bad thing and we want to try and keep that to a minimum. So make sure you do those things. And in terms of the camera, we're absolutely fine. Now, on to talking about that up tilt. Now this is a really, really crucial one to get sorted now, to make sure that you know exactly what up tilt that you want to work with and then that will be this is going to affect maneuvers okay and i mean massively affect maneuvers and muscle memory you move that camera angle i don't know 10 degrees 5 degrees 10 degrees 15 degrees everything about your muscle memory and the way you're used to maneuvers will completely change if you don't believe me take your quad out now stick the t stick it up another 10 degrees of tilt and go out and shoot a couple of your favorite maneuvers and you'll be amazed how you've now got to relearn how those uh, what inputs you've got to put in to get the same result out that you were before that your muscle memory said no this should definitely be this maneuver why has that gone all strange and completely away from what I'm used to that's all based on on um, on the up tilt so we need to get that right now now as I said with a 2.1 lens what really works for me because you've got that extra vertical field of view it's nice because I can run a decent amount of up tilt but still see the ground when the quad is flat. And that's actually how I set my camera angle. I move the, I put the 2.1 lens on and I move that camera angle up until I can just about see the ground when the quad, quad is flat on the ground. And at that point, that's perfect for me. That roughly works out to about, I guess it's somewhere between 38 and 40 degrees. It's, it's gotta be, I'm pretty sure it's, it's around there. That's what it looks like to me. It's not quite 45, 
but that's uh, that's a nice easy way for me to set it on every quad without actually having to, to measure you know with a protractor or whatever I don't know if anyone does that do they but let's talk about an example of uh, you know this is a maneuver that I've covered before in an old acro school but it's definitely something I'm going to revisit because it's a whole new bunch of things I can talk about um, when it comes to, to this maneuver and that's inverted your spins and I get so many people say to me how do you get them clean how do you get them to be so perfectly flat and and just beautiful before you sort of bail out of them and then and then carry on uh, whenever I do them they always go completely mad do they look anything like this now what is actually most likely to be happening there if this is happening to you and it's looking just a, a huge mess like that is you're not taking the camera up tilt into consideration so let me just show you with an example here if i just have this portable screen hopefully that can give you an idea of what the quad's seeing now when you take your quad and you rotate into a half roll so that you're inverted what most of you will do, or what I see a lot of people doing anyway, is they'll cut the horizon with the camera, and then with the horizon cut, they'll think, right, I'm dead flat, I'm gonna do a yaw spin now. The problem is, as you can see there, with the horizon cut, the camera is level, but what is the quad doing? If you look at the quad, it's at that 40 degrees of, uh, of tilt. So you can see when you do a yaw spin, it's gonna rotate around the yaw axis, and of course, halfway around that, you're going to be pointing straight at the ground. That's where the camera's going to be looking. Not until you come all the way back round, which I can't do because my hand doesn't twist that far. Not until you come all the way back will you actually get this to look in the right direction and cut the horizon again. So that's the problem. So what you actually need to do to correct that, and again, we'll do a tutorial on these and they've got lots of other tips for getting these right. But when you're actually up, I know that I have to tilt down a little further and you can see it's not the horizon I'm looking at, I'm trying to do too many things here, it's actually more the ground that I'm looking at to get the quad to be level with the horizon. At that point I'll get a beautiful flat inverted yaw spin. <laughs> And it's little things like that. If your quads have all got different camera angles or every, or, you, or even worse, if your camera's loose and every time you touch the ground it goes flat and you just adjust it to roughly the same spot each time. Every time you do that, it's gonna be messing with your maneuvers because how much do you know to tilt down at the ground each time? That's gonna change if your camera angle is constantly changing. And I don't wanna be thinking about that. I, I, I've got a muscle memory developed for that based on that camera angle. When I go inverted, I know exactly how much to pull back to get that before doing the inverted yaw spin. And that's what gets me consistently good inverted yaw spins. So I know I've said that word so many times over the last video and this one, but we need the consistent, consistency wins where we can. Know you're up tilt, have a method for adjusting it visually, if you can, like I do, with adjusting it up so where I know the ground is, just in view. And then make sure you apply that to every quad you fly so that your muscle memory is always moving forwards and not taking steps backwards. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. In terms of finding that point of up tilt that you're comfortable with, get it to a point where it feels good like the speed that you're carrying feels comfortable to you if you're approaching an object at that speed make sure that that, that up tilt is accommodating everything you want to do you don't want it so high that you, in order to not to, to stop yourself sinking on the ground you've, you've you've just got to be full throttle because the higher the up tilt the more the props are like this there's there's more power going backwards than there is supporting the weight of the quad so you've got to compensate with power to stop yourself from losing altitude that's, that's going to be an issue for you and, and it's really going to make uh, certain maneuvers difficult because you'll, you'll be approaching everything at the speed of light. Um, if that's something that really appeals to you, then that, that's fine. I mean, for me, it just requires a different mindset and re requires some different muscle memory and relearning of maneuvers. For me, I like to strike a balance. I like to find that point where I can go to the faster speeds and still see in front of myself, again helped by that 2.1 lens with a wider vertical field of view as well as the, the horizontal. That helps massively. And it's, it's not just that I can get away with those high speeds, I can also back speed off, flatten the quad out 
and still be able to see the ground, still be able to see in front of me, not feel like I'm just looking straight up at the sky. Again, if you run a high up tilt, you flatten the quad up, you're just looking at the sky, you haven't got a clue what's in front of you. I mean, you know, if you run a high up tilt, you know what it's like trying to land. It's, it's not fun. Uh, you've got to come in hard and fast, maybe you split S, and then as soon as you can see the ground, flatten out and just kill the throttle. It's, it's not going to be gentle and easy. So hopefully that's some useful information about the camera, about the lens I use, why I use the lens I use, what cameras I use, and why the up tilt is so important to maneuvers. As I said before, we just took the yaw spin as one maneuver where the up tilt of the camera is absolutely crucial. And there are so many more that are affected um, by that up tilt. There are so many more. It really just goes into your whole flying and, and into your muscle memory. So get that decided, get happy with it. And only at that point do we then move forward. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.